Hey, it's Claire and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favourite films of 2017. It was really hard for me to narrow it down to just four films because there were a lot of great films out in 2017, but I chose these four because they had an impact on my life or they moved me in a way and I know that they're going to stay with me, so that's why I wanted to share them. The four films that I'm going to talk about are very different and I would like to say that I have quite a varied taste in film, but in general I really like films that make you think for whatever reason or make you question your own life or society in general. I love films with strong female characters. I love it when characters or films keep you guessing and I think that's kind of what all these films have in common. I hope you enjoy and I'm just going to jump right in. The first film that I'm going to talk about is a film from South Korea. It's called The Handmaiden and it is an erotic psychological thriller. It's adapted from the 2002 novel called The Fingersmith. The film is set in Japanese-occupied Korea in the 1930s. It is extremely erotic, so you'll know what I mean when I say 100% do not watch this film with your parents. So the plot of the film is quite tricky, um, but I'm going to try and just sum it up a little bit without giving any spoilers. And please forgive me for my hideous pronunciation in all of this. So the film opens in a small, poor village, we meet a con man who plans to seduce a Japanese heiress called Lady Hiduku. He plans to marry her, commit her to an asylum and steal all of her money. You know, every girl's dream. He hires a pickpocket named Suki to go and be the lady's maid and slowly gain her trust and persuade her that this count is the one for her and that she should marry him. But things don't go as planned and the two women form a close bond. This is a very long film and the film is broken up into three parts. The same story is told three times but we just see it from different points of view. It really explores the pursuit of pleasure. It's an incredibly beautifully visual film. It's unbelievably beautifully filmed and the attention to detail is insane. This film is hard to explain and this is part of the reason why I loved it. It's a bit crazy at times but it's ultimately about female sexuality, female friendship, romance and female power. You will constantly be asking yourself who is playing who. Next film I'm going to talk about is Get Out. So Get Out is probably one of the scariest films that I've ever seen. Um, but it's also really hilarious and that kind of makes sense because when I was doing research for this video I read that Jordan Peele, the film's director, said that he found lots of parallels between comedy and horror and I think that's so true. I'm going to be really careful about what I say about this film because I think that one of the biggest joys of this film is trying to work out what the hell is going on and when it's revealed it will just blow your mind. The film follows a young interracial couple called Chris and Rose. They've got to the point of their relationship where Rose wants Chris to meet her family. They're packing their stuff for the weekend and Chris asks Rose, do your family know that I'm black? Is it okay? And Rose reassures him that they're fine with it, that they're very liberal, etc. They arrive at Rose's family home and we find that Rose's parents are almost making too much of an effort and they're sort of exaggerating how fine they are with the fact that Chris is black. Chris just interprets this as them being nervous and making an effort, but strange things start to happen. For example, Rose's mum hypnotises Chris against his will and there are lots of workers in the house that are black and they're very docile and they won't interact with Chris. The film is essentially commenting on the systematic racism that exists in the US and the way that it deals with that huge theme is incredibly unique and fascinating and there are so many ways to interpret this film and that's why I don't want to say too much because I really want you to make your own opinion on it. You can really tell that Jordan Pill respects his audience and I really appreciate that. You're left to make up your own mind about things and he doesn't dumb anything down. I really like films that don't go for the cheap and easy thrill. For me, the scariest thing in this film is a big reveal. It is freaky. <laughs> I said it blends the genres of comedy and horror amazingly well. I don't think I've ever seen it done so well. And I have to say that Rod is one of the best 
characters. He is absolutely hilarious and I just loved it whenever he popped up. This is a truly brilliant film, in my opinion. I think it will become a cult classic. It's got an incredibly bold and terrifying message and it stayed with me for months. I'm going to switch gears a little bit now and talk about a period drama that I loved this year and that is called My Cousin Rachel. So it's based on a novel by Daphne du Maurier by the same name. Claflin, is that his name? Caffin. Caflin. Sam Caflin plays Philip Ashley who is orphaned as a young boy and he's adopted by his older cousin called Ambrose who raises him on his large and beautiful estate in Cornwall. Ambrose becomes ill and moves to Florence to regain his health. He writes to Philip and tells him that he has met this wonderful woman called Rachel, he's fallen in love with her and he's married her. Ambrose's health deteriorates and through letters to Philip, he gives the impression that Rachel is not to be trusted and that she might be the reason for his failing health. Philip is concerned and travels to Florence to find that Ambrose has died and Rachel has left. Philip is devastated and returns to England full of hate and is determined to destroy this horrible woman. He's told that Rachel has followed him to England and that she's coming to the estate in Cornwall. I really like that Rachel doesn't appear until about 30 minutes into the film because the suspense and mystery surrounding her really, really builds. And of course, when we meet her, she is nothing like we, or more importantly, Philip imagined. And the story develops from there. Rachel Weisz plays the titular role and she is absolutely incredible. She keeps us guessing the whole way through the film. You're never really sure what her real intentions are. You don't ever know what she's thinking and you really don't know what secret she's holding. And that makes her a very interesting character. In a way, I feel that Rachel can be seen as a feminist character. She's obviously feminist before her time. And this is because she is sexually free. She is a sexually liberated woman. For me, Rachel Weisz is the star of the film, but there are some good performances from the other members of the cast and it's a really good ensemble piece. If you love period dramas that are tinged with darkness, you will love this film. It's filmed on location, I believe, in Cornwall, so it's beautiful, the surroundings are beautiful, and yeah, I highly recommend you give it a watch. So the final film that I'm going to talk about is one that I only saw a couple of days ago, and I had a feeling that it would make it into this video, and the film is called Call Me By Your Name. This film is based on a novel by the same name. It's set in Northern Italy in the summer of 1983. It is a love story and it tells the story of a painful but beautiful love between Oliver and Elliot. Elliot's father is a professor and every summer the family welcomes a visiting student who comes along to help him with his work. Oliver, played by Army Hammer, arrives. He's charming, charismatic and everyone who meets him falls in love with him. He has a strong impact on teenage Elliot and their relationship evolves throughout the film. I really have to praise Timothy Chamelet again, excuse my pronunciation, I was never very good at French. He plays Elliot and he is incredible. He, I have to say that he really grated on me at first, but I think that teenagers are actually really annoying and so he definitely manages to portray that. But what he portrays really beautifully is that feeling of being just totally obsessed with somebody and I think that we can all relate to that, I certainly can. <laughs> Elliot, everything is better when Oliver is there and everything is dull and bleak when he's not and it just really takes you back to being a teenager and having that love that you just feel that you can't live without. The actor that plays Elliot's father is also brilliant and delivers one of the most heartbreaking monologues I've ever seen on film. This film is incredibly engrossing and I just couldn't look away. Firstly, because of the way that it's filmed, and I'll talk about that for a little bit in a bit. But secondly, because we all know where it's going and you really want it to happen. And it's just so great when it does, even though you know that it's not going to necessarily end well. You're still so keen for these characters to come together. Call Me By Your Name is shot on film as opposed to digital and I think that this does two things. I think that the use of film really helps to portray the period of the film. It really helps to give that 80s vibe. And I also think it shows the director's love of his art form. It's so unusual nowadays for directors to film on film, which is really sad. I read an article with the film's producer who said that the Italian summer is as much of a character as Oliver and Elliot. And that made so much sense to me. The film really transports you to a different place and really captures that laziness and warmth of a summer in the Mediterranean. 
everything about this film is romantic. The scenery, the art and culture that they're talking about, the relationship between the characters, it's beautiful. Trust me, you will never look at a peach in the same way, but <laughs> whatever. What I really loved about this film is that it's really simple. And to be honest, I had really, really high expectations of this film. I was absolutely dying to see it. And for about the first 40 minutes, I was really unsure about whether I actually liked it. Then something switched. I didn't realise that some of the soundtrack is by Suffren Stevens and his music is very important and personal to me. One scene that really moved me, one of his songs came on and I just started crying. I just couldn't believe it. It just really, really moved me. This film really, really moved me and affected me. I can't quite put my finger on why but it shook me and I love it when cinema does that. I think that that is one of the most incredible things about film is that it can move you and transport you to a different world and to see things through someone else's eyes and that to me is beautiful. So those were some of my favourite films of 2017. As I said, there were many, many more that I could have spoken about but I thought I'd try and keep it short. I hope you enjoyed. Tell me in the comments down below what your favourite films of 2017 were. I would love to hear and I would love it if there are some films on there that I haven't seen. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It would make my day. And like and share this video if you enjoyed it. I will see you on the next one. Bye!